Well, welcome everybody. Uh, I want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Dr. Sarman Sarkeesian. I'm the chair of the uh, mentorship committee on the Armenian Medical Society. So we're very happy to launch this series. Um, it's called the Armenian Medical Society Pre-Health Mentorship Interview Series. And it's something we put together as a society to help bring um, a lot of, you know, pre-health students and, uh, you know, students that are actually in professional school and those that are in the postgraduate years together to share some of their fresh experiences with the, um, the pre-med students. We've done a couple of interviews right now, and I'm lucky enough to have one of our volunteers, um, RN Dermar Dirosian, with us today to share some of his experiences. Um, so without further ado, RN, do you want to quickly introduce yourself before we go on to the questions? Sure. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Arun Dermardrosian. I uh, graduated from UCLA in 2022 with a degree in biochemistry. Uh, I just took my MCAT uh, a little more, more, more than a month ago, and I'm hoping to apply to medical school next year. Yeah, and as I had mentioned before, you know, we really want to bring together students um, who are really along the entire spectrum of the pathway those that are really hot in the middle of their undergraduate years, those who just graduated, those who are about to matriculate, those are, who have matriculated. And Aaron is in a very unique position because he simply just took his MCLAT in the, in the last month. That's why I'm really excited to have him come on. So before we go on and talk about his experience with the MCAT itself, let's go back a little bit. How did you pick your major? Um, one, what was your major? How did you end up picking it? And you know, tell us about how much you really enjoyed it. Sure. Uh, so I first started at a community college. I went to Glendale Community College, and then from there I transferred to uh, UCLA. Uh, when I first started at, at GCC, I really didn't know what I wanted to major in. I kind of went in like undecided. But uh, in high school, my favorite course was like chemistry. So with that in in mind, uh, the first one of the first classes I took at GCC was uh, chemistry, and I really my my you know interest in in that class in that subject rather uh increased because one of my professors was like really good so i i just i thought like i could you know pick that and move on move on with my educational career because that that was something that really interested me uh i spent about uh 3 years at, at community college i completed all, all the general ed i i was uh, i get certified when i was when i transferred and i transferred as a chemistry major but uh, once I got to UCLA, I started taking the upper division class uh, chemistry courses. And that's when I kind of noticed that I'm not really enjoying the plain chem chemistry uh, aspect of it. You know, I had to take like or, uh, advanced organic chemistry classes, uh, physical organic, organic chemistry or like solid state. I wasn't really into that. I noticed that I was more interested in learning about the chemistry in the biological context. And that's what really biochemistry is. So I ultimately ended up changing my major to uh, biochemistry. So I would say like for other pre-meds out there or other people interested in uh, going into health careers, I think the main thing is to choose a, a major that you're interested in because most of the health careers that you want to go into, they all require like the basic science courses that you have to take in the lower divisions. So I think having that passion and interest in a, in a topic will really help you in the upper division courses and get you through because in those upper division courses, things a little get a little more tough. And if you have that uh, interest and passion, that'll give you the extra push for you to be successful. Very good. And you mentioned you're at um, community college for about three years. What did you do during community college to really maximize the chances that you were able to transfer to UCLA because it's very competitive. There's a lot of smart kids at community college. They're all, you know, trying to get A's in every class, do extracurriculars, join honors programs. I mean, what were, what are some of the important pillars in that success story? Yeah, of course. I mean, you have to really focus on your academics. That's, that's one major pillar. One, one of the, I think, number one thing they look at in, in your application when you apply. But besides that, uh, I was part of the scholars program at, G at GCC. And I know most community college uh, colleges in California have that, where they have a, a, an alliance with specifically with UCLA and some of the other uh, UCs. And if you get certified through that uh, program, they uh, you're you're like you're in a good position to be uh, accepted. 
Uh, besides that, I was also a, a supplemental instruction leader. And through that experience, I was uh, I was able to my, get to know my professors, which helped for my letter of uh, medical school letter of recs. And um, also I was able to talk about that experience in my UC application. So I think being involved in, you know, uh, some kind of project with your professor, even at, at the community college level, uh, will help you uh, be a better applicant for the for UCs or any other university. Very good. Any other pearls of wisdom uh, before we move on to um, other aspects of your pre-health career about your community college experience? I think one one thing I would say is like if you're trying to go to a UC. Uh, one of the mistakes I made as I didn't really get started on the application, I would like I would start like a month before. I would say uh, if I were to do it again, the day I start community college, I I would review the essays that they require to you to you know do before when you're applying, and you know just passively have those in the back of your mind because one of the main questions that you have to answer is like what have you done outside of the classroom that has helped you prepare for the major and and for that I, I i used my like lab experience in like regular ochem lab like we had one experiment where we had to like make acetaminophen and you know i i used that as as something that i think i said like uh, uh, i can see the power i'm gaining through my education to like change the world by by you know making being able to know what the processes that are that in that are involved in making the cinnamon and 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 I was able to show that in my essay. Mm -hmm. So I think just knowing what the what the uh, essays will ask you way before you're gonna actually apply will help you because you will be able to, you know, but kind of in the back of your mind generate a story that yeah that you'll be able to portray to the schools when you're applying. It's important. So really having ownership over every piece of your application. Yeah. Yeah, and you're not even uh, applying to professional school yet. So now that you got to UCLA, obviously it's a little bit of a, you know, it's a different tempo because you go from a semester system to a quarter system. Um, you know, I'm sure the caliber of students has also changed a little bit. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, definitely for me, uh, the transition from the semester system to the quarter system was a, a little rough especially the first uh qu quarter at ucla it's just because you don't know how fast things are moving i mean when they tell you like during weeks three and four you have midterms and then you have two weeks off then you have to start studying for the finals that's actually like kind of accurate um i i think you just have to be aware of that fact and not be afraid of it but just be aware because i kind of was i was like ah oh, it's gonna be fine i'll, I'll manage but then like uh my first quarter was a little bit of a struggle because of because I didn't like acknowledge that. But I think just acknowledging that that you you know your first quarter might be a little bit of a rough, you know, transition. I think you should be fine by just by just you know knowing it and and being prepared for it by just I would say like uh for your first quarter, maybe I, I UCLA tried to take it lighter because because of, of the transition that you'll have. Very good. So um, what did you think about the class size difference at UCLA versus a community college? Uh, when I transferred, I, since I had done most of my general ed classes, the classes I took at UCLA were mostly upper division. So they were, they were, uh, I would say roughly around the same size as as the ones at, at GCC, maybe slightly larger. Um, but one thing that was slightly different at UCLA compared to like GCC was because the professors there are mostly involved in research, they're not able to like dedicate as much time and effort individually for each student. So uh, maybe getting involved in some kind of project at UCLA with with a professor it doesn't necessarily have to be research. For example, at UCLA, I was involved as a, a learning assistant, and through that way, I uh, I got to know one of the professors, and I was part of her, you know, educational team. Good, very good. 
Okay, so um, you know, because you have such a unique experience of being this close to the MCAT, um, let's chat a little bit about that. So, you know, it's a it's a daunting experience, the MCAT, and you know, similar um, stress levels are those going into dental school for the DAT or the PCAT if they choose to take it. How did you prepare for this test? Yeah, so I uh, after I graduated, I took a little time off to kind of rejuvenate. Um, but then right immediately after I kind of got back into studying for the MCAT, I did uh, end up taking one of the blueprint courses. Uh, but ultimately, I don't think I used that to really prepare because I was working at the time and I wasn't really able to kind of consistently follow the study schedule that they laid out for me. So I ultimately ended up with like creating my own study plan uh so that include like the content review planning out like practice questions and practice tests and and i think you don't necessarily need one of those courses to be to be a prepared uh, to be to be successful on, on a test i think without one of those courses you can be as successful if not more successful doing it on your own of course you're going to need some third party uh material to prepare such as UWorld world and like the blueprint practice exams only the practice exams uh i think with those you'll be in a good position to get a good score so let's just take those two um companies for example there's a lot of them other out there you know um some one attitude among students is well they're all the same um you know no two things are ever created equal how would you compare blueprint versus u world for example from what you saw blueprint uh well uh the u world stuff is like mostly the questions so i used a, uh u world for questions back then when i was studying but now they have apparently released a, a content review course with like it's more like blueprint um I think one thing that drew me to Blueprint is the way they, they advertised it is that it was like a one-stop shop for the MCAT. You know, they provided the content review, the, the practice questions along with the practice tests. I think overall, it's the quality is good, but I don't think you get your money's worth with Blueprint because you could do all the things they provide individually at a much, at the fraction of the cost. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's like a... You if if you you know if you if you really want to if if you think that's going to give you the motivation and push to go with the course you can, but it's not really the the magical key that they might advertise to you that that they they're going to provide, because you still at the end of the day have to put in all the work and and hours to study for that exam. It's not impossible. It's just that you have to, you know, put all the time and effort that you have to, to succeed. Well, let's talk a little bit about the the content review. So on um, Blueprint, because that's your experience. Did you think the quality was there or the thoroughness? Yeah, so they're mo most of the, they did send out uh, content review books, which I didn't really use. The main things that they, you know, pushed were their videos. Uh, their videos came with uh, like a pre-test so that you could test your uh, knowledge before you watch the videos to know how to, you know, to assess like your knowledge in the topic before you review if to see if you actually had to watch the videos. And then you watched a couple of videos and then after you took like a practice, uh, like a five, 10 question quiz to check your understanding of the videos. I think the, the videos were like very engaging. They had like a speaker showing like different diagrams, different cartoons, but I think for me personally, the videos did not stick, especially for the uh, psychology and sociology section. It's just that I knew my, since my like background in, in sciences, like in biochemistry and like chemistry, uh, I, I wasn't really familiar with like sociology and psychology section. And I really wanted to study the sociology and psychology stuff. But even though I watched those videos, I really, it didn't really stick. So I had to go back and do some, you know, I had to use like Khan Academy for the psychology and sociology section. So overall, I think they they give you all the content that you need to learn. Blueprint Blueprint does that. Uh, it's just that the way they present it for me personally it didn't stick. 
And I think there are so many other kind of resources outside uh, on, on the internet, whether like the content review books or Khan Academy videos that provide different kinds of methods of, of learning the content for free. And then as far as the practice question, so you had UWorld and Blueprint. Do you think that was enough volume? Yes, outside of the AAMC, yes, it, it provided enough questions. I mostly did, uh, I, I would say I did about 75% of the uh, UWorld questions. And I think that provided enough practice practice uh, besides the practice tests, yes. How often were you doing practice tests? So uh, the the third party ones, the blueprint ones, I was doing, I started doing them about two and a half months out. I was doing one every week. And then I would take about one to two days to thoroughly review them using one of their journal, uh, using like the re blueprint recommends like keeping a journal. And in that journal, you just basically write down what you missed what the correct answer is and why you missed the question. And I think keeping track of, 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 of your practice tests like that, you'll, you're able to see the, your gaps in the, in the content. And then after I was done, like creating that, you know, the uh, journal of my practice test, I went back and reviewed the, the content that I had to, that I had to know and I missed the questions for. Okay. So, you know, the, uh... The old adage goes, if you didn't learn it the first time around, it's going to be really hard to learn it the second time around. Do you think that sticks true? Content that you thoroughly understood in undergrad during the courses really was not an issue once you sat down for the MCAT, correct? Versus mm -hmm. things that perhaps you just didn't have a chance to cover in class or you didn't focus on as much because your priorities were you know, in another class. Yeah, definitely. I mean... Uh, even though I had taken sociology and psychology at, at GCC as uh, for my general education, like, you know, uh, classes, uh, by the time I was studying for the MCAT, it had been like maybe two years and I hadn't, you know, reviewed the, those topics ever since that. So when I was studying for the MCAT, I kind of had to relearn all those psychology and sociology stuff. So... I definitely think if you don't, if you haven't like, you know, if you don't really have a concept down the first time in undergrad, it, this is like a second chance to have it down because, because even though like, let's say for, for physics, uh, it's tested with chemistry on, on the, on the MCAT section, it's still like important to know all the topics, you know, you have to like, you, you don't have to know everything by a hundred percent. It's just that you have to be familiar with everything to a certain level where it's like when you see it on the uh, when you see it on a passage or when you see it in a question, you say, OK, I, I, I know what this is about. I know where this question is going. I, I, I'm familiar with the with the topic, because if you if you if you're not really familiar with the topic, the fear might come as like, oh, I don't I don't know. I, this is a weakness. I'm, I, I don't know what the question is. So it's, it's like it's, it's going to install a bias in you that you don't know, it, even though it's like a simple question. Yeah, I remember, you know, one challenge people have is that, you know, by the time you transition from high school to college, you know, the attitude is finally you're in college, you get to really pursue your passions, you can pick and choose what you want to learn. Well, the reality is, you know, as a lot of people know, the MCAT covers a variety of subjects and a variety of disciplines. And unless you thoroughly enjoyed all of them, you probably got a lopsided education, you know, because that's how a lot of students sort of engineer their undergraduate pathway. So, you know, one thing that I tell a lot of students is, you know, I would practice MCAT passages pretty early on. You know, I wouldn't wait until it's time to study for the MCAT until you open your first MCAT book and take a practice test. It is probably a very bad idea. Only because, you know, if you're serious about going into medical school or dental school, you know, these exams are coming, you want to start to get a feel for what it's like you don't have to carve out four hours a week starting from your first day in college. But I would say at least an hour a week, just get a feel for what, you know, if you're taking organic chemistry, do some OCHEM passages, maybe like an hour a week, at least let's just say you're two years out from the MCAT, just to see how those questions are written compared to what you're doing. Because if you're sitting there taking, you know, 
a test on ketones and you're doing retrosynthetic analysis, that is not how your the MCAT is going to test you. Um, you may be very good at retrosynthetic analysis, but maybe because your professor never even asks you a multiple choice exam on a test. But next thing you know, you're reading a vignette or a passage and you're getting multiple choice questions about OCHEM and you've never actually thought about it that way. It can just create a lot of stress, but it's better you you know, expose your mind to that earlier on in little bits. What do you think about that approach versus waiting until it's time to study? Yeah, definitely. Because the MCAT is not really written in a way that undergraduate like tests are written, even though they test like the same material, it's just that it's just presented and asked in a different way. So I think even though I didn't do it, I think it would be a very good idea to start uh, maybe like end of senior uh sophomore year or junior year, beginning of junior year to do that, just so that you get in the MCAT, uh, MCAT mindset to, to know what you're up against. I think uh, you could do definitely do that for the sciences, but especially for the car section, like the, the critical analysis and reasoning section, I that, that doesn't require any background like knowledge or, and you don't have to do any kind of content review for that. So you could start preparing for that the day, like you start taking like college classes, and there's so many passages online, like Jack Weston has about like 500 uh, passages and you could start like doing like, I don't know, maybe two a week just so that you develop the reading comprehension and like the reading speed that you'll need to be successful on that section of the MCAT. So, you know, you were a science major and, you know, one, you know, challenge that comes up with a lot of science majors is, you know, how do I tackle, you know, the car section? Um, what was your experience like? Um, if you could touch a little bit of, on each section, how you approached it, whether you liked that section or you found it easy or challenging and how you tackled them differently. Yeah, sure. So to begin with the cars, actually, like that was my weakest section. Um, it's just that I wasn't used to reading like those philosophy or economic or, uh, you know, like historical articles or passages that they give. So I think uh, having some familiarity with those topics will definitely help. And one way you can prepare for that is to get is to expose yourself early on, as we said before. And 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 one way you could do that is like read like the journals if you have time on the side, or if you want to do more directed practice, like one good place to do that is uh, Jack Weston. Uh, as I said, they have about five hundred free practice question passages. Also, Khan Academy has a uh, a good amount of like maybe like 50 or 60 passages uh for free online you could you could use those uh and i think just just honing your your reading comprehension skills is, is going to be crucial for that for that section um and 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 you know being able to read a uh 600 word passage in in about in about 5 minutes is 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 a good is a good, uh, you know, a rule of thumb to have for the car section. Uh, for for the the f uh, chemistry and physics section, which is the first section that you get tested on the MCAT, that's that's in, that includes organic chemistry, uh, general chemistry, and physics. Uh, that was my best section, and I think because I really liked like general chemistry and organic chemistry. And I think the way you can really prepare for that is 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 to have like a really good base knowledge in all in all three topics. Uh, I would put much more emphasis on general chemistry, uh, Gen Chem one and Gen Chem two, but you shouldn't also forget about you know your organic chemistry and physics. I know you might read online and you you might like encounter posts that say like oh the physics is isn't as heavily tested on the exam. But I, I would argue that it is, and you shouldn't really forget about it. Even like concepts that you think are not really directly related to medicine, let's say like electricity, circuits, um, magnetism, like even though like it's not directly related, I think somehow they they find a way to test you on it and we, we just have to be ready for it. It's not tested to the level where you, uh, you're, you're tested in a undergraduate like uh, physics class it's much more surface level but you still have to know all the all that volume that you cover in in uh, undergraduate physics classes 
Very and good. for your bio biochem courses, you know, it's it's your first uh for biochemistry, it's only your first semester of biochemistry, and then uh your, and then the bio co covers all of the undergraduate like bio classes. So, uh, at UCLA was bio one and uh bio one two and uh three was the seventh series. And then the sociology and psychology section is sociology and psychology, which I said before, like you could use the Khan Academy that provides all the terms and knowledge that you'll need to get a very good score on that section. Very good. So would you have done anything differently? You know, the way you sort of timed your MCAT, the prep material you chose, when you started to actually practice, would you have done anything differently on the path? Uh, yeah, so I think uh to begin with the uh, the prep i prep course i think i would not i would not get a prep course again just like uh because as i said before like you can you can do all the content uh review on your own on your own time with your own schedule because there's no like one fit one key that fits all like you know uh doorknobs it's just that every student's approach is, is different and 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 you you have to figure out your own and it, it doesn't take too long to figure out what your content knowledge is and what what you need to cover so that's the first thing i would not go with a uh, with uh you know content course i would i would dedicate a month to a month and a half max to doing a comprehensive content review of all the things you need to know for the mcat and then quickly moving on away from it because for me i took a little too much on the content review thinking i have to like master every single topic before i move on it's just having like a general familiarity with the topic will suffice once you get into the practice test you'll know you'll tweak it and say okay i need to know a little more about this a little less about this or you know you'll you'll figure it out then but in the beginning just do a very comprehensive one where it's like you cover everything but you're you know everything, but you don't need to know everything on in a, on a very specific detail level. Uh, uh, next, it would it would be the the practice questions. Um, I th I would recommend the U World practice questions. One way I approached the practice questions was uh, I would take like I would design my half length test on U World. I would do like thirty questions from. Uh, the first section, I would do five passage immediately after. Uh, from the car section, I would do 30 questions from the bio and biochem section, and then 30 questions from psychology and sociology. And then uh, most days after I was finished with that half length diag test, I would do my, uh, uh, I would review the questions and see why I missed them or the questions that I flagged to see like what was my reasoning there. And and finally, with and you would approach your AMC one AMC um uh, material. Uh, obviously, you will have to take all the uh all five practice tests that the AMC has provided. Those are the most accurate versions of uh, accurate practice tests that are available. And also, I uh, would recommend it. They also have like a lot of practice tests. Some of them are are from the old MCAT version. And some of them are, are are based on the newer one. Uh, if you are low on time, and you want to say, "Oh, uh, you're panicking and you're saying, thinking, I won't have time to finish all the MCAT material, uh, all the AMC material," just focus on the practice tests and the sec section bank questions. Section bank questions are the most accurate uh, uh, MCAT practice questions that you will get. They are a little uh, more challenging than the ones that you'll see generally on the MCAT, but they will prepare you well for the uh, for the actual test. Very good. Well, that concludes the, um, this interview. Uh, Aaron, we really appreciate your time. Um, you know, you've been very dedicated to the medical society and, you know, you are one of our rising stars in the Armenian community. And hopefully when you're you know, when you successfully go on to medical school, become a physician, you know, we're hoping you come back and serve the community. So very good. Uh, thank, thank you again. You so thank, thank you very you much. For having me.